Hello my friends, welcome to The Electric Viking and thank you for subscribing to the channel. Now, I've been thinking a lot lately about the effects of pollution, specifically the effects of diesel exhausts on trucks and cars, but also petrol exhausts, which we now know cause cancer, as well as diesel exhausts lately. I've been thinking about exactly how this affects us in our day-to-day -day lives and how hopefully we're going to transition more quickly to EVs so that we no longer are affected by these toxic fumes. Now, while I was thinking about this and even having a discussion with some people about the reason you live longer and why people live longer, which a lot of people seem to believe is diet, which is possible, could be a combination of diet, exercise, but it seems as though the most significant factor to living a longer life is to not breathe in dirty air. Now, Michael Greenstone is a professor at the University of Chicago, and his colleagues have developed the Air Quality Life Index, which converts air pollution levels into their impact on life expectancy. He told The Guardian that the average global citizen loses 2.2 years of life because of today's level of air pollution, which adds up to a total of 17 billion lost years. 17 billion lost years because of air pollution. So for tens of millions of people living in cities around the world, air pollution poses and creates an enormous number of health problems. More than 80% of people living in ur urban areas that actually monitor air pollution are exposed to air quality levels that the World Health Organization says are completely unsafe. Poor air quality leads to the risk of stroke, heart disease, lung cancer, and chronic and acute respiratory diseases including asthma, the World Health Organization said. Now, ozone pollution can constrict muscles in the airways, leading to shortness of breath and wheezing, according to the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA. So, I'm going to pose this question to you. What else on the planet right now is causing people to lose 17 billion years of life? Is the coronavirus doing that? Or is air pollution even worse than the coronavirus? I think you'll find, actually, it is. Now, Furthermore, Michael Greenstone from the University of Chicago says, what else on the planet is causing people to lose 17 billion years of life? We're not just letting it happen, we're actually causing it. The most striking thing is that there are big countries where effectively a combination of the government and societal norms are choosing to allow people to, real, to live really dramatically shorter and sicker lives. He says that, the switching to cleaner energy and enforcing air quality measures on existing power plants have cut pollution in many countries and the, around the world and significantly cut diseases. Now, if you're not believing me, not following me right now, listen to this. Experts at the WHO say diesel engine exhaust fumes, this is based on many years of study, and I'll share those study with you in a second, can cause and do cause cancer in humans. I've been saying this for a long time now. They say that Pollution caused by diesel vehicles and petrol vehicles belongs in the same potentially deadly category as asbestos, arsenic, and mustard gas. Now, about a decade ago, the International Agency for Research on Cancer reclassified diesel exhaust from its group of probable carcinogens to its group of substances that have unquestionable links to cancer. It said that diesel emissions cause lung cancer and increase the risk of bladder cancer and other cancers as well. Now, yesterday there was a report that Seminole firefighters in the United States will soon be able to breathe a little easier, easier thanks to a nearly 1 million federal grant the country, the county will use to install a system that expels harmful exhaust fumes from fire engines when trucks are parked at fire stations. Now, just stick with me for a little bit because this is interesting. Assistant Fire Chief John Thibbert said firefighters sometimes crank up the engines inside the bays of stations to run checks, conduct routine maintenance, or race to an emergency fire. But those tasks lead to toxic diesel fumes being spewed despite a standard ventilation system that removes some of the exhaust. So, despite a ventilation system designed to remove the exhaust, it's still killing them. I'll tell you how. A study in 2013 conducted by the National Institute for Occupational Health and Safety said that firefighters have a 10% greater risk of being diagnosed with cancer and are 15% more likely to die of cancer than other individuals. Now, you would think that firefighters would be more healthy, right? 
they stay fit, they have a gym at the station. It's expected within the, within the force that you actually meet certain health, fitness requirements. And yet they're dying of cancer 15% more often than people who are smoking or massive morbidly obese. It's crazy, right? Now, this study analyzed cancers and cancer deaths among 30,000 firefighters between 1950 and 2009, and it discovered firefighters are more likely to develop cancers of the respiratory, digestive, and urinary systems. Now, the Cancer Council in Australia says that diesel fumes at work cause 130 lung cancer cases every year, and that's only the ones that they know of for certain. And they say that that is only for one reason, being exposed to diesel fumes in the workplace. Now, Terry Slevin, chair of Cancer Council Australia's Occupational and Environmental Cancer Committee, said an estimated 3.6 million Australians were exposed to cancer-causing agents at work with around 5,000 cancer causes diagnosed each year as a result. 5,000. He says awareness of the risks of exposures like asbestos and UV radiation is increasing and is reflected in gradual improvements in work safety practices. By contrast, awareness of the hazards of exposure to diesel fumes is extremely low, especially in relation to the potential harms. Exposure to diesel fumes is Australia's second most prevalent work-based cancer-causing agent. It's estimated that around 1.2 million Australians are exposed to diesel engine exhaust at work each year, and that at least 130 workers each year are diagnosed with lung cancer as a result of diesel fume exposure at work. And they believe that this may be just the tip of the iceberg. Now, obviously, awareness about this is almost non-existent in Australia. There are so many idiots that sit here with their diesel engines just on for an hour. They'll sit literally wherever they are in any location, and they'll sit there for an hour with their ignition turned on. They're wasting fuel, obviously, and they don't realize that they're actually constantly drinking in the stink, the intoxication, the fumes of their, from their exhaust. I see this all the time, constantly, constantly happening which really surprises me because there's been so many articles showing that there's links to more than 50,000 cancers in Europe from diesel fumes, and yet people just seem to have no real awareness of this fact. Now, getting back to how many years of life we would save by not breathing in these fumes, the executive summary of the latest AQLI study says, air pollution is not only a global challenge, but is also intertwined with climate change. Both challenges are primarily caused by the same culprit, fossil fuel emissions from power plants, vehicles, and other industrial sources. More than ever before, the world urgently needs strong policies to reduce its dependence on fossil fuels. Do I believe we need strong policies? I believe that they're definitely helpful, but I believe we're already on the way to solving this issue because of entrepreneurs, primarily entrepreneurs, and also government funding has helped them as well. This is why I believe not only should you invest in companies who are creating a better world. Yep, I talk about them here on this channel all the time. I believe not only should you do that for your own financial gain, but also to help the planet. It actually makes sense on two different levels. And remember, companies like BYD and Tesla and many others are not only bringing you cleaner cars, which are not going to emit diesel fumes and make you more likely to get cancer, but they're also disrupting the world's most polluted industry the fossil fuels industry, and that's what matters the most. Now, the report estimates the number of additional years of life people would gain of if air pollution levels in their country were reduced to World Health Organization guidelines. In India, the figure is six years. In the north of India, 480 million people breathe pollution that is 10 times higher than elsewhere in the world. Cutting pollution would add five and a half years in Bangladesh and Nepal and four years in Pakistan. Now, in Central and West Africa, the impacts of particulate pollution on life expectancy are comparable to HIV and AIDS and malaria, but receive almost no attention at all. For example, the average person in the Niger Delta stands to lose nearly six years of life, with 3.4 years lost by the average Nigerian. Now, in addition to diesel, coal is actually the biggest source of the problem in many parts of the world. Now, if the actual health costs were embedded into prices, coal would be uncompetitive in almost every part of the world. Unnatural gas is significantly less polluting than coal, but burning it still drives global heating. Christiana Figures, former UN climate chief, said on Sunday, let's be clear, gas is not an alternative to coal. 
and nor is it a transition fuel. Investments in new gas must stop immediately if carbon neutrality is to be reached by 2050. Now, fortunately, you and I know that massive investments in solar and batteries and wind generation have actually brought down the cost of renewables to be lower than the cost of new gas, new coal. So that is the good news. But obviously, it's going to take longer for that to, those transitions to renewable energy to happen in many parts of the world that need it right now. Now, the AQLI report is based on research comparing the death rates of people living in places with more and less pollution. The analysis is based on pollution from fine particulate material, with primarily, which primarily affects heart and lung functions. The estimates of air pollution around the world were derived from satellite data at 3.7 mile resolution. Now, a lot of you have been criticizing China on my articles with, I think, a fair basis. But this is interesting. The AQLI claims that China is, in, is an important model that shows how policy can produce sharp reductions in pollution extremely quickly. Since the country began its war against pollution in 2013, China has, has reduced its particulate pollution by 30% and accounting for up to three quarters of the reductions in air pollution around the world. As a result, China's people have added about 1.5 years onto their lives, assuming those reductions are sustained. Now, of course, China is trying to tr transition to electric vehicles as quickly as possible, not only for the good of the country uh, in the sense of pollution, but also for the good of China dominating the world when it comes to the automotive industry and also the energy industry. Now, to put China's success into context, it took several decades and recessions for the United States and Europe to achieve the same pollution reductions that China was able to accomplish in six years. Now, Clean Technica, which is the source of a lot of the information for this video, says that China's success demonstrates that progress is possible, even in the world's most polluted countries. If I told you that pollution was deadlier than warfare, how would you feel about that? Well, its latest report says, the AQLI data is yet another warning that the stakes are higher than ever to reduce fossil fuel emissions. Working unseen inside the human body, the deadly effects of fine particulate matter on the heart lungs and other systems have a more devastating effect on life expectancy than communicable diseases like tuberculosis, behavioral killers like cigarette smoking, and even war. Without strong policies to reduce fossil fuels and bring global air pollution levels down to meet the WHO guideline, billions of life years will be lost. Now from a quote on Clean Technica, way back in the last century, a Harvard math professor decided on a career in musical satire. His name was Tom Lehrer, and his instrument of choice was the piano, which he referred to as an 88-string guitar. In the age of protest music, it was an apt analogy. Lehrer liked to sing a song he immediately called Pollution. Here's a snippet. Pollution, pollution, wear a gas mask and a veil. Then you can breathe, long as you don't inhale. So go to the city, see the crazy people there, like lambs to the slaughter. They're drinking the water and breathing the air. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.